point to the sign. That's the most important part is pointing to the goddamn sign. Oh, God. The match was fine. I thought it got a little crowded at some points, but they they were doing that to prep it for the big the big boys to come in, which we'll get to. God damn, that number 30 happened. And I felt all the energy leave the room we were sitting in, Tom. I don't know because I just kept booing for like 10 minutes straight. Like, which was which is what they were going for. I think we can yeah. all admit that's what they were going for. Is that holy shit? If we send Roman Reigns out at thirty, everybody's gonna be like, "Well, we gotta cheer for fucking Orton." We'll cheer for anybody. Yeah. By the well, way, Randy, Randy Orton won and buried the lead. Randy Orton is the number one contender for the title at WrestleMania. That's pretty much how that gets sold. You, when you're talking about the Rumble, that's like maybe the third or fourth most important thing that happened during the Rumble is, yeah. oh, by the way, Randy Orton won. Because it was that, to me, like, and I'd seen earlier in the day, I'd seen the the Meltzer News. It was like, nah, Randy Orton's going to win. I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right. You, 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 you were just saying that because you can go, wow, the plan's changed. All right, Dave. But uh, he nailed that one, so credit to the Melts. Uh, but like, why? <laughs> when there's so much other talent there right now, and so much young, fresh talent, and god damn it, next Thursday on SmackDown we have to watch John Cena and Randy Orton. Like, have I not seen that enough for one life, for two lifetimes, really? Well, the question was, I mean, who do you put in that spot right then? I mean, people wanted Joe to come in there. I'm not ready to have him main event mania right now. No. And to be honest, I don't think Vince would want that. No. You don't want the TNA guy come in and suddenly headline mania. Um, I mean, the thing that disappointed me the most, I think, about the Rumble was, and I mentioned this last week, um, half the fun of the rumble is just the random entries the like the ones that last like 40 seconds the the superstars from the 90s the weird random celebrity out of nowhere the you know the entire announce team just like you know the random crap and it's funny and it goes in there we had one moment we had jack gallagher and god damn it was glorious. Oh, that was amazing. Then we had two. We had Ty Dillinger out at ten, which the crowd would have fucking burned the building to the ground if that didn't happen. But uh thankfully it did, and I was really excited for it. The only other person to put in there at ten other than Dillinger was Roman Reigns. Yeah, it was the Miz. I told I told you the 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 beginning of his theme of Dillinger's theme plays and then it just cuts off and I hear is awesome. And then the Miz comes out because he's one of two people that get real heat in the company. Yeah. But I mean, I, and we had, they, they set forth with eight quote unquote surprise entrance. 22 people were named. So we had eight slots last year. We had, I think you said like we had three mm-hmm. unaccounted for this year. We had eight. So there was a lot of, Oh, we can bring in people from NXT. We can bring in somebody. We can, you know, it might be Kenny Omega. It might be Nakamura. It could be. There are all these names. Oh, Brutus Beefcake might show up. Why not? And you know, it was Kalisto and Mark Henry, Mark Henry and Enzo and Ellsworth. Like, people that you're like, oh, wait, they weren't actually written down? Oh, we must have forgotten them. It just, And that's how it kind of came off. There was no – Dillinger was the only real – Dillinger and Gallagher were the only yeah. surprise pops that we got out of the eight that were unannounced. And it it was disappointing in that sense. But, I mean, the Rumble in general – I think you had a changing of the guard. You had, mm-hmm. you had no cane, which was sad. Yeah, it was a little bit like, 
I, I expected him to kind of come in and do something and it, you know, at, at least for a minute and a half maybe, and just kind of like pass the torch, but he just was not there. Um, you had Stroman do Stroman things. How good dry, was he, by the way? Dry heave everywhere. He was, he was excellent. I will bounce that up a little bit more though and go, I think my favorite of the dominant group was Baron Corbin. Yes. And he got an excellent rub by that, that series where it was him, Zane, and I can't think of the third one. I want to say it was like, no, Ziggler was late. I don't was know. It, was it Dill or was it Dillinger when they were all going after Strowman? Is that what it you're getting at? It was Dillinger. It might've been Dillinger. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, just to have them like, kind of gang up on him and just hit the spots and he got eliminated. I mean, Corbin nailed him to put him over the top rope and it wasn't a, Oh, it was like, okay, that's how he should have gone out. Yeah. Strowman went in and he didn't look weak as a result. And that's one of those things that concerns you for a guy like Strowman who has to be protected yeah, you know, the these larger guys that have to be protected, being the monsters that come in, and then okay, they get eliminated when like thirteen people decide to like go up against them and kind of like shove them over the top rope. It wasn't. It was three guys hitting hard moves and like kind of ganging up together and taking them out, and it was done extremely well. Yeah, I I think yeah they made two stars. They made Strowman and Corbin in that one match, which was exciting. Um. But for all the negativity that surrounds the fact there weren't very many quote unquote surprises in the Royal Rumble, um, for all the bitching and complaining that people do about them bringing in part timers and outside people, they used nothing but intern like full time talent, with the exception of Lesnar and Goldberg that like are part of the active roster at this time in the build to mania. They didn't take any spots away from anyone that's there, you know. It, they didn't bring in Hacksaw Jim Duggan or the Boogeyman or something to just eat away exposure from someone that's actually there and contributing, which I really appreciate. All right. I mean, yeah, I appreciate that, but at the same time, I kind of wanted that a little yeah, bit. Too. But... If there was a time to bring back the 40-man rumble in the era of the brand split with the depth they have, this is the time to do it. And I hope yeah. they do it next year. Because, again, I mean, Gallagher came in, but you could have had one or two more cruiserweight guys. You had a lot of uh, – I didn't do the actual count, but I remember the last brand split, brand split rumble that we had, um, they made a big point to say 15 Raw, 15 SmackDown guys. I have no idea what the count was, but it seemed, it seemed Raw heavy, and I'll have to go back and actually yeah. do a count of it for whatever reason. But, I mean – Smackdown Ross has got the, a lot. Raw's got the heavier roster anyway, so that makes sense. Yeah, SmackDown's got a lot of tag teams, and none of them were in it. I mean, like American Alpha wasn't there. Uh, Brizongo wasn't there, to my disappointment. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of those guys that just didn't make the Rumble because I don't know. Are you saying they didn't remember the Rumble, Tom? They did not. They were not reminded of the Rumble. <laughs> Um, all right. One one final note on the Rumble match. Uh, and I keep seeing this online, and maybe I'm looking at it through rose-colored glasses of nostalgia. But I've seen a lot of people, and I've heard a lot of people talk about The Undertaker looking terrible and looking old and awful. And I didn't notice it because I'm caught up in the moment of the Rumble. But I haven't gone back to watch it. I was wondering if you you caught any of that and had a, had an opinion on that. Um, Taker looks awful in general just because, well, part of that's half of his look anyway. He's got the heavy eyeliner type stuff, and I mean, the guy is over 50. I mean, let's call a spade a spade here. And he was never necessarily that athletic looking. He, he just, he was a, he was a big guy. And, um... He, he doesn't have the mobility and he's not going to have the mobility, but I mean, they're talking about hip issues with him and he was in there for 
you know, a short period of time relatively and then got eliminated. And he's not, I mean, he's not a full-time guy anymore. And he's honestly not really a part-time guy anymore. Um, and it's up to how he feels. And I know they like to bring him back for the big show, you know, sorry, Paul wait, but they bring him back for the <laughs> big shows and like mania and I guess rumble in this case. And he just, they try to have him do stuff. And I mean, it got a big pop when he got announced and he showed up on raw and did all that. But I mean, he's not to get all, all Japan or anything, but he's Baba at this point where yeah. they just kind of roll him out and he does his signature spots and has somebody else carry him for the most part. And then he goes away for however long it's, right. it, it's tough to say the actual word retire when you're, you know, a professional wrestler. I mean, look at Terry Funk, but he's especially been on a retirement tour for what? 25 years. He will not retire even after his death. But in the case of Taker, I mean, it, it's just a thing of I don't think he necessarily wants to hang him up and they offer him a nice paycheck to just show up every once in a while and do the entrance. So, I mean, if you were in his spot, would you retire? I, no. I don't think I could. I'd show up and take the pay. I mean, you know, especially if I could get, you know, in easy situations where I know I'm not as injured or likely to be injured, I should say. So, yeah, I mean, and and not fighting Brock Lesnar is a good way to do that. Uh, yeah. But... All right. Well, ask, we... ask Randy Orton's skull. <laughs> that's why Rand. That's why Randy won the Rumble. By the way, hey, uh, Randy, we're gonna have we're gonna have Brock uh, concuss you, but uh, you're gonna win the Rumble. Is that okay? I owe you one. Yeah. Okay, Vince. Uh, but moving on through the Rumble. Uh, Cena won World Heavyweight, their WWE Championship, whatever. I don't know where this falls into line, but uh, he won the 16th championship. Uh, so he has tied Ric Flair's record, quote unquote, record for. Uh, I was gonna say, the officially designated amount of times that they say that Ric Flair won the title. Right. Uh, he's tied that uh, now, and boy, they didn't make a big deal of it, and they're still not making a big deal of it. Yeah, I, I had seen the thing, too, that uh, apparently Flair was going to come out and do a little, like, presentation or whatever with him winning the title. And they scrapped that for whatever reason, just did backstage stuff and posted it on social media. Um, I'm perfectly fine with the way he celebrated because he went and grabbed his title and ran into the crowd and found the Make-A-Wish kid because that's what John Cena does. Yeah. The most poignant picture I saw from the entire event was at the end of that match. And you see uh, little Nate handed Cena the title. And uh, AJ's still flat on his back. I don't know why I'm trying to recreate this because this is a podcast and you can't see what I'm doing. Um, AJ's trying to reach for the title while he's laying there. Almost kind of like, while you know, half unconscious in his selling state. Reaching right. back for the title. It was kind of a really cool picture. Well, he's thoroughly confused since champions consistently lose on Raw and SmackDown <laughs> and yet are allowed to keep their titles. So. Right. But uh, how that match was real damn good, bro. That, that match was excellent. I mean, and as much crap as Cena gets, and Lord knows he gets a lot of it, and yeah, I give him a little bit too because, I'm sorry, the attitude adjustment is just... It, it it's a takeover, it it's a transition move. Yeah, it's not a finisher. When AJ is pretty much trying to cripple you, and then you're going, oh yeah, well I'm gonna flip you over my shoulder, and they have to sell both these moves as equally devastating. It's yeah, it's just a hard sell, and I wish there was. And you see Cena pulling out the occasional. Where did that come from with, like, the, uh, oh, God, what was it, the Canadian Destroyer or whatever that he pulled out of nowhere? Yeah. And it's just like, oh, where'd you get that from? You know, but 
I mean, it was, I mean, it helps to have AJ in the ring, but I mean, Cena puts on, uh, Cena can work mm-hmm. when he wants 